Wayfair 515, Albuquerque Center, Roger, climb and maintain 13,000. You have got to snap out of it! You snap out of it! You snap out of it! Aircraft calling, say again. Lifeguard 46, clear, direct Albuquerque, climb and maintain 17,000. You snap out of it! You snap out of it! You snap out of it! Turn left heading 115. Contact Albuquerque Center 134.6. Cut the engine! Cut the engine! Wayfair 515, descend. Ready, boys? Contact Albuquerque Center 134.6. Wayfair 515, Easy now, that's it. Land on that flower. Ready, boys? All reverse. Spin it around. Genius, man! Genius! Here on The Secret Lore, we've seen many disturbing tales, but the story of Barry B. Benson in B-Movie is one for the ages. The intricate story is one that is very cleverly disguised as a children's film starring some guy that dated a high school student, but believe it or not, Jerry Seinfeld dating a high school senior is nothing compared to the horrors we are about to see here on The Secret Lore. Adam, don't! It's what he wants! <laughs> the first piece of secret lore we must look at concerns the relationship between Barry B. Benson and Vanessa Bloom. Now, of course, this relationship is no secret to anyone seeing the film. In fact, Jerry Seinfeld has since apologized for the sexual undertones within B-Movie. However, here on The Secret Lore, we are not concerned with what is readily available, so we are instead going to look at the scientific and logistic sides of what it means to have a relationship, sexual or otherwise, with a honeybee. First, we will start off by looking at the sexual side of things. Contrary to popular belief, bees do in fact have penises. They measure at about one-fourth of a millimeter, or 250 micrometers. When the male bee or drone has sex with the queen, the queen bee's vagina acts as a guillotine, ripping off the male bee's penis, also causing its abdomen to tear. This of course leads to the quick death of the male bee after mating. While it is a strong possibility that Vanessa's vagina would not be tight enough to rip off the very small bee penis that Barry B. Benson has, there is one other aspect of bee intercourse that makes this incredibly dangerous. That, of course, is the honey bee's want for double penetration, or brother bumping, as it's known in some areas. You see, when a male bee loses its penis and dies, the next male bee to step up has to deal with this dead penis stuck within the queen bee. This dead penis is called a mating sign, and the next male bee can either choose to try and remove the mating sign, or look past it and double penetrate or brother bump the queen. Now, given the size of Barry B. Benson's penis and his want to please his partner, Vanessa, it is a strong possibility that brother bumping or double penetration would be readily accepted within the bee community. So, Barry B. Benson may choose a partner in crime of some sort to help him have sex with Vanessa. However, finding a partner in crime for Barry B. Benson to have sex with his girlfriend could prove incredibly difficult, because the average length of the bee penis is, of course, only one-fourth of a millimeter. That would mean you would need 104 bees total to equal one inch of penis. While Barry B. Benson is incredibly popular, it could prove difficult to convince 103 bees to have sex with his human girlfriend alongside him. And even if Barry B. Benson could convince these other bees, there is still a strong possibility that most, if not all of them, could die during the act because their penises could be ripped off from their bodies and their abdomens could rip, leading to death quickly after. Of course, the other option for Barry B. Benson would be to find a penis fit for a human, synthetic, 
or otherwise. Now this could prove fruitful in pleasuring Vanessa alongside Barry B. Benson's very small penis, however, the average length of a honeybee is only about 15 millimeters. That means any penis of about one inch going into Vanessa alongside Barry has the potential to smash him during sex. So while there is a bee penis size chance that Barry B. Benson could survive a sexual encounter with Vanessa, it is far more likely that he would die in some grisly fashion if he were to attempt this. Which leads us into the other side of this piece of secret lore, which is just their relationship, if it were to remain platonic and asexual. If Barry B. Benson were to dedicate his life and attention to Vanessa, it would only be about two months in total, because the average lifespan of a western honeybee is only 30 to 60 days. While there is some wiggle room within this time frame, no honeybee tends to live past six months unless it is in fact a queen. With all that being said, Barry B. Benson's relationship with Vanessa is doomed to be short term, whether he chooses to have a sexual encounter with her or if he chooses to remain asexual towards her and platonic. In either scenario, Barry B. Benson passes away shortly after the events of B-Movie. While this may seem like a sad story to many, it is actually a very hopeful and empowering one, because the life of a bee is, of course, all Barry B. Benson knows. It's what he's been surrounded by, and it's most likely readily accepted within their culture that after you have sex, much like after you sting someone, you pass on, and your penis is ripped from your body and your abdomen tears. While it seems gruesome and horrifying to us, it is in fact just a part of bee life. And I'd like to think after the events of Bee Movie, Vanessa and Barry B. Benson did in fact have sex, and Barry's penis was ripped from his body. But this is not a sad moment, but instead, a very hopeful one. Perhaps these two characters could conceive a human-bee-child hybrid. I've put up a picture here, of what that might look like. This piece of secret lore shows the harsh reality of what it means to be a honeybee, but it is only the tip of the iceberg of what we're looking at today on the secret lore. Our next piece of secret lore concerns Jerry Seinfeld's giantess fetish, and before we get into it, I must state for legal reasons that this one piece of secret lore is all just a theory. I cannot say whether or not 100% Jerry Seinfeld has a giantess fetish, and everything in this piece of secret lore is mere speculation based on what I've seen in the film. It is not meant to be presented as fact, but simply a theory. With that out of the way, let's get into Jerry Seinfeld's very real, 100% legitimate giantess fetish, or macrophilia as it's called. It's no secret, as we've already seen, that Barry B. Benson and Vanessa were in a relationship. However, the reasoning behind this definitely comes from Jerry Seinfeld's want to be with a giantess. A giantess, of course, is a giant woman, and the fetish of macrophilia is the love of a large woman. And Jerry Seinfeld seems to be, after watching B-Movie, a lover of large. However, Jerry Seinfeld's motivations behind this explains exactly why we get this odd relationship between his character Barry B. Benson and Vanessa. It is because Jerry Seinfeld's penis is incredibly small. So small it could be called B-sized. This immediately, of course, adds relatability for Jerry Seinfeld to the character of Barry B. Benson and it lets him live out the fantasy that he is already somewhat living in his own life. Any vagina presented to Mr. Jerry Seinfeld would seem gigantic compared to his tiny penis, and through B-Movie, Jerry Seinfeld decided to truly live out this fantasy, but tried to disguise it as making himself a bee. Jerry Seinfeld, of course, is always having sex with a gigantic vagina in relation to his tiny penis, but Jerry Seinfeld decided to use B-Movie as an outlet to fully live out this fetish, by making it so his character Barry B. Benson 
could have a relationship with a fully gigantic woman in proportion to the entirety of Jerry Seinfeld's character. Because of course, Jerry Seinfeld in terms of height and weight is average in real life. So he decided to shrink himself down and disguise himself as a bee to truly live out this giantess fetish. This is of course a very interesting piece of secret lore because it shows once again the lengths that filmmakers and writers will go to to live out their sexual fantasies through their work. We see this many times as well with directors such as Quentin Tarantino where he inserts many dirty feet within his films so he can masturbate to them later. Allegedly. Of course, everything in this segment of this episode of The Secret Lore is merely a theory and speculation. There is no way to say for sure whether or not Jerry Seinfeld has a giant test fetish or if Quentin Tarantino loves dirty feet. It is, however, incredibly interesting to see the lines that we can draw between these fetishes and the writers behind the scene. It is once again a very intriguing piece of secret lore. Our last piece of secret lore deals with what happens once the credits begin to roll at the end of B-Movie, and how Barry B. Benson may have actually set up a world run by bees, whether he's the one running it or not. You see, throughout B-Movie, there is symbolism of Barry B. Benson becoming the next great leader of the world. One piece of this symbolism is when Barry B. Benson first enters Vanessa's apartment. We can see that he is peering out, observing the humans, as he has become the fifth head on Mount Rushmore. This, of course, is symbolism for what Barry B. Benson is setting up. He's setting up a world run by bees. Now, as I've already stated, I like to believe that Barry B. Benson passed away after having sex with Vanessa just once. However, this is not set in stone, for advancements in bee healthcare and bee medicine could mean that Barry B. Benson gets to live on for much longer. However, whether Barry B. Benson is leading the bees or not, this is still a very interesting path that the movie is choosing to go down. Regardless of who is in charge, whether it be Barry B. Benson, his friend Adam, or any of the bees within any of the colonies across the world, the path set by Barry B. Benson is an incredibly dangerous one, because not only can they communicate with humans and have actually gotten them to go back on their demands for honey, but now the bees have a means of hitting the humans where they hurt. While many people think that humans hurt for money, there is in fact one other area that they could truly be hurt, and that is with their crops. Humans have to eat food and vegetables of sorts, and bees and other pollinators are responsible for almost 70% of all pollination. If bees were to go on strike once again and hold the world hostage so that they could be placed in charge, there is a very good chance they could make it so they were the new leaders of the world. Bees do not care for the stock market. They do not care for international shipping or politics. They focus only on honey. As we see throughout Bee Movie, it is the one thing all honeybees' lives revolve around, and their want and need to make honey is what pollinates the earth. However, once the bees are given enough honey that was stolen from them, they realize they don't have to work, and the world falls apart. This exact structure is how the bees take over the world, slowly but surely using their pollination as a form of bargaining chip for things such as tanks and weapons of war. It's hard to tell exactly how long it would take for this whole master plan to unfold that Barry B. Benson has set up, but it is clear that it will happen at some point in time, and humans' days are numbered on the planet, at least as the top of the food chain. This piece of secret lore is incredibly interesting because it is not dependent on the characters within the film. It is merely dependent on what the characters have done throughout it. They've set a plan in motion to take over the entire world, whether it was Barry B. Benson's intentions or not, but as we see throughout the film with the symbolism such as the Mount Rushmore head, it may have been his plan all along, whether he gets to enact it or not.
B-Movie will always be an incredibly interesting film, whether you choose to dive into the secret lore or not, but I hope today you have found a new appreciation with this complicated story of love and death, and I hope to see you again next time on The Secret Lore. If there are any films you want me to take a deep dive on, please let me know in the comments below, and remember, even if it sounds completely butt-fucking-sane, there will always be a place for it here on The Secret Lore.